Who's this guy? What the? Hey! What I'm you taking doing, this man? shit! Get these cases out of here! No, my butt's in the fucking shit, Charles. I told this thing I had a present for you it. You happy now? You got the puppy pad well, and everything. It stuck up on me, man. I was trying to do my business. You got some good reading material. Yeah, I was, but that's next. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to episode three of our shitbox YZ125 uh, rebuild. If you saw episodes one and two, it was not only hilarious and you need to check them out, links below, but this is a progress report. We have some stuff that came back. Tony, what do you have there? I got a frame. It looks so good. Where'd it come from? Fast blast and coat. Thank you, Dean. And Thanks, we also Dino. have an engine that uh, if you guys saw episode two, we conquered. We we're feeling good about, unfortunately. Uh, it's been ruined and we're going to explain how that happened here shortly. So guys, buckle up. We're going to show you all the badass things. You want to yes. flash, them, flash oh. them some leg right there? Wait, you want to what? You heard what oh. I said. <whistles> show you some things that came back, some care packages that came from some of our favorite companies. Yeah. And then we're going to show you, you know, how things oh. used to look when we started. You're giving so. me the virus again, man. Here. Get that touch out of here. Ugh, get it out of here. I got a special <laughs> present for this later too. Yeah. <laughs> mm. All right, guys, we've got the frame up on the chopping block. We want to, of course, show it off. And then we're going to show you some mods we've done to this thing that you mm -hmm. guys can do to your older bikes. And also, all this stuff, where can they find it? MXSkillShack.com. What's going on over there? Why do we have the freaking website in the first place? Well, we started this website because we wanted to show people how to build motorcycles, mm -hmm. work on motorcycles, sure. maintain motorcycles, right. dirt bikes all specifically here. And perhaps the most exciting part at the end of all of those things Sweet. people have learned. Give the bikes away yes. that we build. Everything we build, guys, is going home with you. So having said that, let's start with this badass frame from Dean at Fast Blast and Coat. Yes, I like I how he uh, takes the time to mask, you guys can't even see it, mask the VIN. Yep. So you can actually read the damn thing when you pull the tape off. Yeah, this thing's got like a coat fresher than wet paint baby dude it is it is popping it's so white hits yeah blast you right in the face for man. sure so we did some mods to this frame bro and first of all before we get into these mods like the rear brake upgrade do you remember what this thing used to look like before the giant heap of shit chuck <laughs> yeah here here's a oh, god it's still got evidence of it i mean yeah. it was this let's the, see it well what we discovered all this sludge here is actually remnants of oil mm -hmm. from the shift shaft seal yeah which the shift was shaft was like a banana shaped like an egg yeah. so we modded we took away some bracketry for the old remote reservoir uh, master cylinder. Yep, and I have the new, what does it look it's new? Like a 15 but I have style, the new right? rear brake right now, yeah. so I can actually show everyone. Yeah. If you guys want to see what we're talking about in regards to tabs and brackets are removed, I will link an Instagram reel below. I'll show you guys, it shows you guys how to remove those tabs. Yeah, that's that right there. Thank you. So here is a 2003 and newer uh, YZ125 and 250 rear master cylinder. Yes and show them how it goes on there. So it's gonna bolt the same bolt pattern. Mm -hmm. And we already test fit the brake pedal. Mm -hmm. And that brake pedal actually is up to current for the most part, I believe maybe not 22. Yep, we're gonna show you guys in a second the brand new brake pedal versus yep. the old. Yep, and all of that will fit on these older steel frames. And so what's going on here? Like why is this, who cares? Like what's well, happening? Well, we got rid of the remote reservoir mm -hmm. for the brake fluid containment. And then there was another brake line that would run from that to the rear caliper. Um, is that what you got right there? That. You got it? Hold I'm on, Charles. Spill my coffee. Okay, we already dropped the camera right. once today. Yeah. We don't need to do that again. <laughs> so here <laughs> is the old setup, guys. You have the master cylinder in Tony's hand. You it have- Sits like this. Yes. And that, that little, oh, I don't even want to get the frame dirty. I'll take that. <laughs> the virus is being Whatever. spread in new parts. I'm gonna have to get like antibiotics cowbell? again, bro. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, see, that's how this sits. So that would sit there. Yep. There used to be a hook here yep. and a hook here. Yep. And then another bracket. Bolt right there. Yeah, bracket, bracket for the hole up top. And so we've ground and removed these here and here. Mm -hmm. Ditched this remote yep. resi old school. Yep. So yeah, mod number one. So we'll, re we'll utilize everything else. Caliper, hanger, but all these pieces are gonna go in the pile. Yes, look at where we're coming from here, man. Dude. What a There's still spiders. I thought we got rid of those damn things. <laughs> So moving on to that brake pedal, we'll show you the old one and we'll show you what we ordered off of a 2021 or 22, yeah. pretty sure, YZ250. And so, uh, you know, this was an important part of this brake mod. We wanted to make sure all these things still jive in the rear where they hook up to the master cylinder. So rather than taking our time to- you Pop that rib yeah, up, Pop this that. off, zinc that, 
that's anodizing yeah. to protect this pedal. We'd have to strip that off first. You can we'll see where our boot rubbed it. Let me show you this. Uh, we could, and that's cool, but. We got a lot of spring wear here too. So at some point yeah. in time, that's gonna come apart. You're gonna for lose sure. your spring. Um, and and just, you had a, a thing for this OEM pedal. You I like, like the a, OEM pedal. You have like a romance with I the do. OEM I mean, pedal. Well, the, so what I've learned with these Yamahas over the years mm -hmm. is if you run an aftermarket pedal, sometimes you run the 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 risk of the actual um, toe point, mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm trying to say, when you make contact with your boot, mm -hmm. when you're riding, it sticks out further. So what would happen is you're actually dragging your brake without even knowing you're like dragging your brakes. to you. Yep, because the pedal comes out about, I don't know, five millimeters, 10 millimeters, mm -hmm. even further than the stock one did. And maybe that's the point sometimes, yeah, right? Maybe. But uh, in this case, yeah. How good does that look? Dude, we got a little bit of an OEM vibe. Yeah. The brand new pedal still fits the 1997 and probably therefore the 1996 frame. Double and check. We got all fresh homework. parts and it wasn't really. I mean, this thing was what, 50 bucks? Yes. I don't even know if it was that expensive. Yeah, I don't know if it was. We got fresh bushing back here. You know, this is, it's brand new, right? So we're going to have this wear that's in here. So you're not going to have the brake pedal slop. Um, plus, it just looks like crap. Yes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna have a lot of that going in the pile. We're gonna run some sweet banjo bolts and wire tie all that stuff for you guys. Uh -huh. It's gonna be it's gonna be dialed. And if you guys are into this kind of stuff, to be able to do these kinds of mods, and there's much, much more coming, especially in this video, you gotta check out MX Skill Shack. It's yep. 10 bucks a month. We love doing this for you guys. Yeah. You can win bikes that are gonna be worth 10 grand a pop in most At cases. Minimum. And uh, you're gonna really love it. So yeah. It's 10 bucks. Dude, you can't even get Chick-fil-A for freaking 10 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you want to show them what happened with our oh, linkage arm? Oh, yeah, this guy. Okay. So, what we did discover, you know, per the teardown, mm -hmm. there was some there was some scars. And it was right. sad. And we um, can't reuse that anymore, no, right? I wouldn't trust the integrity of this. What the hell is that glob so, of aluminum on the back uh, there? A shock bolt backed out. Yes. At one point. Mm -hmm. And just as it was going through its stroke, it just kept wearing into the link arm. And then eventually it came to a stop. And then that's where they discovered this and they had it repaired. Remember um, that movie Saw? Yeah, that was definitely a, a Saw moment. Let's play a game. Let's play a game. Your shock bolts come out. You go over the bars. <laughs> yeah, so we'll show you guys what we copped on eBay oh, for man. a couple of bucks. It looks this thing is damn cherry. new. It was Rip. off of a 96 and no uh, weld repair, so that's going to be really nice. We'll yes. get this thing vapor blasted up. We'll get the bearings pressed out. If you guys need to know how to or would like to learn how to mm -hmm. remove bearings, MX Skill Shack. Get the shack. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'll get that thing cleaned up. We just got, did I even tell you about the massive care package we got on the way from All Balls? Oh, we did briefly touch on that. Okay. And then we dropped the camera. That's right. And then this camera hit the ground. Guys, we have huge care package, all brand new bearings for the steering neck, swing arm. Linkage. Linkage he's holding. Calipers. Engine rebuild parts, brake rebuild parts. So we'll yeah. be showcasing how to do these things. And of course, thank you guys at All Balls. Thank you, All Balls. Charles, what you got there? Dude, vapor blasting. Ooh. Does it ever get old? This is where we started. This is a piece of your linkage that is still good. As you can see, all the bearings oh, are popped out. We'll show you guys how to do that on MX Skill Shack. This is the link we're throwing away, but this is what it used to look like. So pretty stoked to get you guys all dialed up with fresh chassis components yeah, across the baby. board. What else was I gonna show you guys? Dude, well, look at our clamps. Here's another bit of where ugh, we came from. Death. Filthy. It still stinks. Yeah, so we need to get these uh, stem pressed out. MX Skill Shack, we'll show you guys that. Get these either, we'll probably get these coated, right? Did we yeah, decide yeah, we on kind of touched coated? about it. Yeah, I think we yeah, talked about we that. We gotta yeah. figure that part out, but either way, it'll have all new stem bearings for you guys. And it'll be Tits McGee. Can I say that? I don't know. Hella. Hella. <laughs> hey, Charles, where you at, dumbass? Yeah, what happened? <laughs> oh, what we got there? Dude, check these things oh. out. So these are your radiators. They came back, they were waffled, covered oh, in JB God. Weld. And we got that just extreme. <laughs> contrast going on here dork so how do you put these damn things i on? don't there know we we're gonna yeah. we're guessing we need to go to the good. shack to study ourselves for sure. exactly <laughs> so you guys can still get new plastic louvers for these old ass 96 uh, 789 uh yz so that's cool we got some brand new oem ones but this is gonna look cool that contrast black yep, and white like contrast white. dude it's like a yin yang boom love it not the yin yang twins wasn't that a rap group <laughs> yeah it was okay guys here's something to just look at yeah nice not nice. <laughs> sort of nice. <laughs> Crap. That's not nice either. But this vapor blasting stuff is quite amazing. Let me tell you. Let's check these out though. Dude, what you got? 
What you got? Hold on, I'm slow with the camera. Oh. The FNG's yeah. in the house. <laughs> Oh, hey, he finally made it. Hey, look who showed up. Guys, these are your look fork tubes. And we're stoked on these because not only do oh, they man. look like Kashima, this is done by Fast Blast. Dean and Fast Blast did the frame too. This is actually Cerakote. We had major, major problems oh, with these tubes. God. They had uh, the tube rot. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. You guys remember them from before, the earlier videos where we had basically slag and Jemima syrup yeah. coming out of the bottom of them. It's kind of like pictures you see with people that have taken meth. The teeth are kind of half of that, yes. you know, yeah. that was meth. This one just got, what do they call it, dentures, implants? They got the, the, the something crowns, like that. something like that. Anyways, I'm not a dentist, but guys, so this is Cerakote. It's actually a, a thin film ceramic coating with a little bit of flake in it. So it, it looks like Kashima. It doesn't take up any room when it goes through the clamps mm -hmm. in terms of the spray adding tolerance. So these are going to look yeah, absolutely wicked. amazing. Dude. I don't know if you're able to pick up any of the fork rot. Let me see if I can find you a good there's, spot. There's but still some, some can stuff. Can you see those dimples in there? I can, a little bit? Yeah, there it right is. Here. Okay, yep. So these were starting to go where they were no longer a good candidate for uh, having been polished and re-anodized. This was basically the, the last thing we could do to these tubes. And Dean has a solution for it. So yeah. pretty cool. Polished up the lower stanchion there. Cerakoted the tops. Got the vapor blasting done on the top. Everything else is already at AHM, factory services. These are gonna go down there next. And uh, yeah, when they come Man. back, they'll be fully transformed, but we were stoked to show these to you. Heck yes. Well, I have a question. What up, folks? Get back in the camera. Oh, okay, go. All right. Charles, what, what, right. what are we doing with this thing? Like we talked about doing the, you know, like a replica, but you and I are not really replica folks yeah however and, uh, it's kind of getting spicy for sure you, you guys gave on. us a lot of good ideas what were they like um you said pj1 yeah, PJ yamaha one. troy is always a oh, classic sake, uh, i got uh, like a chub yeah. just thinking about it. wait what Look at that. <laughs> what <laughs> you're hard again Jeez, knock man. that off i'm not talking about Must that be me <laughs> we got something else cooked up for this um we can't wait to show you guys oh what do you want to give them a, a sneak peek or no what? Oh, we talk, you gotta wait free. You just want to freaking like you just want to bring toy. it up and tease everybody? Oh, yeah, duh. I like your style. <laughs> you want to show them that badass care package that came from our boy Dave at Bolt? Dave O. Hey. So you haven't seen what? any of this stuff yet. Dude. And I'll tell you why this is so awesome, in my opinion. This bike is old as shit, guys. It's super old. Dave still has all these parts for this thing, some of which, if you were to buy separately. OEM, like, yeah, it's gonna dude, cost a grid. That's the nut for the rear axle and the washer. That's a $30 part, probably. Yeah, OEM for shizzle. Drilled washers. Dude, radical. Really cool. We got the old expansion chamber mm -hmm. kit. So you got the joiner. Springs. We got pipe o rings. Awesome. Dude, wicked cool. There's another probably yeah. 60 plus OEM parts. I mean, we got more drilled washers. Mm -hmm. Bigger ones. Those are what, 25 mil? Mm -hmm. Those are 25. These are 18. Yeah. Okay, and that's that's important to note because like radiators, mm -hmm. rear, front fender, you know, shrouds. If you wanted to do side number plates, stuff mm -hmm. like that, like you're yeah, gonna like want to pay attention. These locations here, yep, can be a lot different than the bolt holes under your For fender. Underneath. And you just want it to look nice, right? And have it yeah, uh, factory, symmetrical. If that kind of it's it's kind of period correct, don't you think? Yeah. Almost hey. like factory of the day. For sure. What hey, else Dave, you got in there? I got a question for Dave. For Dave, what's up? Hey Dave, you should anodize these sometimes. Yeah, I think like he might have anodized Red, ones. does he? Oh, well then. He used to. I stand corrected. Yeah, maybe not. Dave, okay. Maybe, maybe I, I haven't looked into that. That would be uh, one of the only things Dave doesn't have. It doesn't, yeah. What else you got in there? We got, we got hub savers, so rear sprocket bolt kits. Take these from you so you can actually Grab them. Uh, unload stuff. Hub we savers, got, so all the bolts for the sprocket. Yeah, we got some random. 8 by one 2 five, try triple clamp. These Style are bolt. the service packs, I believe, we showed you guys on the MX Skill Shack website. So if you don't buy a pro pack that has everything in it, which I believe there's one in the bottom of that, you can get just regular M8 at, at whatever length you need for your triple clamps or whatever. So yeah, that's pretty got, cool. There's a pro pack in here. There is a pro pack? Yep, I see it. I got an axle that's nut. Pro pack. Pro pack. What's that one right there? This right here is full plastics fastener kit. Cool. Everything you need. You're like, yep. hey, I just need to put my plastics on my bike. Oh, you need a full plastics fastener kit. Oh, what is it? <laughs> Check well, this case. Out, <laughs> it's a 1996 and 2001 YZ125 N250. Yeah. Mind blown. Oh. Dude, and so these will come with every bolt. Oh, you can see it on the back. Yeah, and yeah. like all and the washers. Yeah. And it's got some of the little crush washers. You got the captive hardware in the back right there that goes in your air box to oh. hold your rear fender to it. So everything. And those, that's awesome. Oh, there's the service pack. Holy Santa Claus. Oh, shit. 
Like, service pack. There you go. This is, we got what? We got 10, M8125 by 16, by 20. Look at all that. That's all of it. So Just if there's heat. anything that isn't in the pro pack, you guys are covered. These will hold yeah. your exhaust all hangers on. Subframe bolts. Like yep. we could use exactly. those for subframe bolts. Yep. Pinch bolts for your axle. Man, that's mental. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. That's right. I had never seen these until now. So that's awesome. Oh, oh, that's perfect time for it. Right? Right. But wait, there's more. <laughs> what we got here? We got rotor bolts. Yep. Right, and on rear, the Yamaha, right, breaks. we got the countersunk head. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty rad. Already got some uh, thread locker on them. Yep. That's nice. Ooh. So what hasn't Dave held together on this chassis yet in this pack? Like literally well, nothing? Well, we have the engine. Bam! Yeah, we're going there next. Uh, yeah, fat, the full engine fastener kit. Mm -hmm. And these things are amazing. They're dimple-headed. Mm -hmm. Fresh and bright. Yeah, you got crush washers in there for yeah, any sort of uh, like oil check holes. We got our or... domies for our cylinder head. Yeah. So our, our copper for nuts. the heads yep. too. Yep, looks like that's in there. Nice. Uh, what else you got? Oh boy, we got more washers. I keep saying what else you got, but There's honestly, stuff this, is, this is your bike, guys. Yeah. So this is what you've got. We just get to put it together for you. Exactly. And show you how to do it. Correcto. Um, there's those, and then last but not least, the, the mega pro the pack. Mega. You guys need to have these, like, legitimately. I grab hardware out of my pro packs all the time for customer jobs because mm -hmm. somebody will be missing the bolt yeah. or whatever, and then you go and get the pro pack, and you can replenish the pro pack just by calling Bolt and saying, "Hey, I need, I need 25, you know, eight by one two five Fuji nuts." The service kit. Yeah, right there. Yeah, there's Reloaded. that too. Yep. Every bike build I've ever done. I have this left over, and when I finally do wipe them out by sharing them with other bikes, I have a really cool container to do a bike yeah. breakdown into for Free. the next build. So you put your jets awesome. in it, like if you need a carb box, yeah. that's a perfect carb box for sure. Um, Thank you, Uncle Dave. Thanks, Dave. We appreciate it. Uncle Dave. I'm not yeah. the only uncle around that's here. That's right. All right, Tony. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> You startled me. I was putting bolts away for Christ's sakes. You were probably putting something else in there, huh? I you thought about it. Got a dick in the box. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we get into that there busted engine and the, the lack of a left case, we're going to explain what happened. Do you want to give these guys a sneak peek of that thing we found on eBay? It has a stinger on it. Oh, yes. You want to unsheathe that? Where is that? Okay. Uh, oh. So, All right, guys. What is it? We've been pretty hard pressed for some period correct kind of stuff? Yes. Uh, and what we have here. What the hell is that? It's got a stinger on it. Look we at got, that stinger guys, tip. We found An actual pro circuit. A PC with the stinger. 304 with a stinger. There were Dude. two. There were two, there might still be one more on eBay if you wanna go find it or DM us and we will uh, see if we can get you the seller for it. But Dude, in, in the words of my uh, Northern California friends, I'm hella stoked. <laughs> <laughs> See, we got the fucking sticker. It's got the OG sticker. Like the bright neon action. from the 90s. Badass. So, guys, that's going on your bike. We also have, do we want to tell them what Steve's doing with the chamber up front? Or do we want to kind of keep that a surprise? Oh. The head pipe. I mean, isn't that... Huh. What do you think? We're having a cone pipe built yeah. for you guys. I'm just going to say. <laughs> yeah. So, you'll have a nice cone pipe. <laughs> We're um, up with that uh, PC, PC with the stinger on it. So yeah, this, is, this was cool. Because I know we reached... Guys, don't remember us from uh, Elite Moto Factory and MX Revival. You know, the Skill Shack thing's new, but we are not. So mm -mm. we go all the way for you guys. All the way, man. This is going to be something else. All right, pal. Here's what we got. Oh, man. It's a bit frustrating, but it well, is what it is. It also lets us know we tried. For sure. We very, very much wanted to keep every original piece of this bike because, like I said, if you saw episodes one and two on the bike teardown, then the engine teardown, it was uh, quite the conquest, and we didn't really anticipate totally. this. Not at all. I mean, we, we taking studs out of you know cylinders or mm -hmm. cases this has been something I personally have been doing for a long time. Yeah, it's not and that hard. No, and I I was on a struggle bus on this set because they were mm -hmm. so rusted on this side yeah, here. This bike was outside for ten plus years. And we soaked them, heated them, we freaking grabbed them with the double nut trick, we grabbed them with the stud tool. Yeah. So we, what ah, were we doing when this happened? What were we filming for? Uh, the engine teardown on the shack. Okay, on MX Skill Shack. On MX Skill Shack. Gotcha. And, and we, we wanted to show you guys what? How to tear an engine apart, mm -hmm. how to prep it for vapor blast, because mm -hmm. that was the intention. We're still going to 
proceed with vapor blasting the cases, mm -hmm. but we have to get the studs out because what happens to the studs, Charles, when you vapor blast them? Well, if you vapor blast the studs, not like they weren't already rusty, but we wanted to get these out so that we could then prep them, zinc them, mm -hmm. put them back in better than new. But this left engine case had other plans for us in regards to the studs. These ones came out just fine. Mm -hmm. You guys will see that on Skill Shack how things go wrong and how you proceed or how you try to proceed yes. when things are sort of beyond your control. Yeah. And then eventually where we are now, where it was yeah. a complete failure anyways, but also what we pull out of the back. The you guys want to callers. see us struggle oh, wait, with yeah, I forgot about like those. struggle, trying yeah. to get something out that usually you can heat up and pop out pretty easily. The steel collars or bushings that go yeah. in here between your engine and your swing arm. Yep. Boy, those gave us a fight. So ultimately what happened? We were struggling with the collars. We got to the other studs and everything in the cylinder came out nice. Yeah, and I, I wrecked the the top of the studs with mm -hmm. the stud removal tool. So then right. we brought them to our friend in the machine shop. Right. Because we were like, well, we're going to relinquish control on this one and we're going to give it to somebody else to give this an attempt because we don't have a welder. So we thought sure. they were going to weld a couple nuts to the studs. But these things, it gave them so much of a fit they had to get the cases so hot that they actually started to liquefy <laughs> by the looks of it and then yeah. the you know our gasket surface elevated mm -hmm. and so i was at the point where i'm like yeah. well we don't want to take a chance with a seal that's a problem on top of that we have a distorted hole now as well so for sure so guys when we i went to, to the machine shop sorry to interrupt, no you're good this had been heated up so much that it had actually risen. The deck here had risen, and then this area that uh, yeah. encapsulates the magneto state or whatever you guys like to call it had actually sunk right here. So it's almost like a marshmallow here. It, it was and then concave. It here. was gnarly. Yeah. So we we basically got to the point where we're like, guys, before you break your studs, if you get this far mm -hmm. for education purposes, you want to relinquish control. Yep. Take it to a machine shop and have somebody extract these, right? Because we were we burned the threads off of them with mm -hmm. the extractor tool and. Everything else. So we were trying to show how you do that before you break these off yes. and give it to a machine shop where usually things go pretty smooth, but it didn't go smooth. And that left case half just got sacrificed, sacrificed. So having said all that, it's kind of long winded of me, but what did we find out about uh, the lack of line bore? What is line bore and how did we proceed? So line boring, like some manufacturers, you have to buy cases mm -hmm. as a set. So when they manufacture the case, they actually take a boring tool to, to this is from my understanding, to bore all the orifices, mm -hmm. right? Your seals, your bearings for alignment purposes. Right, and you're, they're done at the same time as a matched mm -hmm. set, basically, right? Yes, I've never seen it done, Okay, but that's just what I've understood sure. as what was explained. And how that. you're taught, right, in your yeah. long career. Yes. So in this case, the Yamahas, you can get individual cases. I know Hondas, depending on the model, you can do that. KTMs, mm -hmm. you gotta buy as a set, stuff like that. So, right. um, so we, we found a left-hand case on eBay. That's in yes. really good shape. It's on the way. The gasket surfaces, from what we can tell, look OEM, like yeah. they haven't been manipulated. So no and cracks. it's a 125, yes. it's not a 144. Because there was some of those out there that we found um, I had a friend, Jad, reached out. He had a whole engine, but it was a 144. What happens with 144? Well, it's a talk about case relief. It's a big board. You gotta, you have to relieve this part of the cases for the actual cylinder board to sit within. And the pistons um, start to go down without yep. hitting exactly. the lower case, right? Yep. So yeah, what Tony's trying to describe is that some of the cases were either damaged, broken, or had JB weld. Some of them yeah. were 144s on eBay, where this yeah. was relieved on the left side. We want to use the You're standard going, right yeah, side. Keep it 125. And then not only that, but the 1997 year is a six speed. And they went back and forth, five speed, six speed. Yeah, and I'm not sure remember. how the cases would differ, but we wanted to make sure and get a 97 case half for that six speed training in case there was some discrepancy. Yeah, discrepancy in side where yeah. you can't fit the six speed because we got a. 2001 and it was a five speed yeah so whatever so we're trying to keep it you know for what we had just so we can at least accomplish this for sure so this little bastard you aren't escaping us all the way we're gonna oh i got a special present for you we got a special present for this lefty and then this guy here right side you can't escape us nope. bro. oh excuse me guys i'm gonna use the bathroom i'll be back <laughs> okay <laughs> who's this guy what the hey what i'm you taking doing, this man? Get these cases out of here. No, my butt's in the fucking shit, Charles. 
I told this thing I had a present for you it. You happy now? You got the puppy pad well, and everything. It stuck up on me, man. I was trying to do my business. You got some good reading material. Yeah, I was, but that's next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so that pretty much rounds out our little sneak peek of your 97YZ125 complete rest of mod. We do have a few things to close out with. We've got oh. a new swing arm coming. This one's got a massive dent in it, so it's going in the trash. We also have something special mm -hmm. to replace this old black 97 airbox. What you got? Did you just puke in your mouth a little bit? Throw up a little bit. You want to show the people after Whoa. you swallow it? <laughs> Drama. <laughs> What is this guy? Look at that. Oh man, that's a crispy one. We found a white air box. There was one year where these came with white air boxes. It was 2000, I believe. I think so, so yeah. Uh, yeah, that's gonna tie in nicely to our theme, obviously. Your subframe looks amazing. If you could just picture that Pro Circuit Stinger Bang. on this bad boy with that white air box and all the other cool surprises that are coming. So we also have a new left side engine, engine case, case coming. Yeah. We've got our new linkage. Yep. Parts are starting to come from all balls, back from Dean. We're gonna get into that engine. Yeah. And guys, we wanna show you how to do all this stuff. We also yep. want you to win this bad boy and the CR250. What? Coming up soon. He said CR250? He said CR250 and the CR250 upcoming. So check it out, guys. MXSkillShack.com. Yeah. You better go there and just at least learn something. <laughs> Not pooping on engine cases. Only if it's something that gives you such a fit and take a <laughs> crap on it. <laughs> such a fit. <laughs> Yeah, guys, we're going to teach you much more than how to take a dump on a ruined engine case. Although yeah, it deserved it. It was a valuable lesson. Yes. He did put a puppy pad down before he went. I didn't want to poop on your floor, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, all right, guys, that wraps it up for today's episode. And we just wanted to update you on the new 125 build we got going. Mm -hmm. Remix Skill Shack. Sacking. Yeah, we've been kind of dropping the ball on it. We have a lot going on just in terms of this, other things, mm -hmm. both our businesses. But... We wanted to at least let you know there's progress and That's it's right. looking pretty badass. And you can find it at mxskillshack.com. All you got to do is press that button. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.